In terms of tools for penetration testing, what would be your top, let's say, three? That's tough. Um, so I pay for two, so I guess I'll have to include those. I pay for Nessus and I pay for Burp Suite. Um, so you have to have a Nessus license if you're doing pro penetration testing. Let me, let me switch this from pro to, to just amateur level before you get a job. Uh, Nessus and Burp Suite are a must because Nessus just saves you a lot of time. Um, and Burp Suite also just saves you a lot of time. They have automated scanning. Uh, same with Nmap, which might fall into both categories if I had a top five, but it, it, I, Nmap's good as well. And then you go in there and you look at them, not only from the scanner part, but from your visual part. And it's just like that, that double coverage in case you maybe missed one on one end or missed one on the other, uh, just to have those checks and balances. Uh, so definitely those two. And I would say Metasploit is probably my third most used. Uh, as a as a pro as well. If I had to go, I can't pay for anything, then we're talking probably Nmap, Burp Suite Community Edition, and still Metasploit on the top three for uh, the amateur level as well. If you want to gain an edge over other cybersecurity professionals, take my Python for Pentesters course and uh, learn how to leverage the power of Python in penetration testing and cybersecurity. Link in the description. Kali Linux, Barrett, or something else? So Kali Linux for me, I actually have moved my majority of my web app testing to Windows. Okay. Um, but the, so Kali Linux, I've used Parrot. I think Parrot's very pretty. Uh, yeah. But the, the issue that I was having with Parrot is that for me, for on my systems, I could give it as many resources as I want. The repo download speeds were insanely slow. And the, uh, the OS was really just buggy. Like I couldn't, it would freeze on me in the worst situations. And just, it seemed like it was using uh, my CPU and my RAM at really max levels where I've never had any issue like that with Kali Linux. So I, it could just be my experience. So your mileage may vary, but I'm a, I'm a Kali guy at heart. What about actually paying for some sort of a cloud virtual private server? So I don't do that. I should. I've been thinking about moving in that direction, and I've used those in the past for, for companies. Um, but for me, if I'm doing an external, and maybe say I have some sort of uh, code execution that I want to try to talk back to me, I'll just open up a port for a minute on my, on my router, let it trigger port forward to my box, and, and try it that way. Um, it, it could just be because I'm cheap and I don't want to pay for the, the VPS, but... Uh, I've, I've always tested that way. I think your mileage varies again with who the person is and how they test, but I always test for my own VM. I was asking you this question because I've actually experimented uh, for the past couple of days with different VPS providers, um, and it's, you would be surprised how cheap they got. Uh, you, you have like uh, good resources, like really good resources for maybe... 15 cents an hour which is which is really good for That's dirt cheap yeah. yeah a server of uh, 16 gigs of ram and uh, uh eight core cpu and it's like and you have quite a few providers so there's uh there's variety to choose from mm -hmm. so might be a good option depending on your context i think for bug bounty hunting it's it's really good to have um so, I, and I've looked into it in the past. Maybe I'll, I'll need to look into it again.